Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Monday, June 24th, 2019. Uh, just a quick reminder, I will be on vacation starting tomorrow uh, through June uh, or July 3rd. Uh, so we'll come back uh, July 3rd. The markets are closed July 4th, but I'll be working uh, to catch up. And I just want to say that I will uh, be away from my desk most of at least this week during the day. And we'll get to do, uh, we'll try to get uh, at least a couple markets updates uh, out there uh, they probably won't make it out by six o'clock so if you're looking for something best to check on the site right side of the chart .com. Uh, if I post any public videos or content that'll be on the site uh, probably again uh, at least this week not uh, until later later in the evening all right uh, starting out this will be a recap to the video I did earlier today for members uh, minus the bond analysis and the trade ideas We'll just look at uh, what what's probably the most important thing to keep in mind this week is we have uh, an economic calendar that's about as heavy as it ever gets. Uh, last week, remember, we had the big market moving uh, FOMC meeting or potentially market moving. Uh, this week's economic calendar is actually a plus the uh, the G20 summit is much much more important uh, I think because with the uh, FOMC announcement the odds were better than uh, what was it a less than a 20 percent chance one out of five chance that we we're gonna have any type of rate change any cut uh, the markets had priced in that we'd have uh, no cut last week which we didn't and that the Fed would come out and say they're willing to be easy and you know cut rates if they if they need to going forward so that uh, again was was widely the expectation of the market hence you know not a lot of big movement sense. Um, now what we have coming up, I'll just highlight it again here. I mentioned this in the video earlier, but uh, starts out tomorrow. Powell, Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, speaks at 1 p.m. Uh, probably not much more than what uh, anything that he said last week after the uh, the FOMC meeting. Although, you know, the market hangs on every little word, so that, that could jar things. They didn't put a red dot by it. Market, move it. market moving indicators have a red dot here. So that follows with uh, durable goods on Wednesday morning, as well as international trades. Uh, for those of you that are trading energy stocks or crude oil, you have the crude inventories uh, that come out Wednesday, the weekly inventories, natural gas inventories on uh, Thursday. And then the big, big uh, GDP report and the jobless numbers. So uh, just a, a heavy, heavy calendar. Uh, GDP is very important. And then add to that the G20 summit where uh, they're, you know, we'll either have good news or bad news on the trade talks. So one way or another, expect a tweet from Trump. Expect some headlines that trade talks are going well, not going well. Most likely it's going to be positive. If I had to put money down, it will be, um, even if it's one of those generic uh, eh, trade talks are going good, we had positive results or something, you know, positive talks uh, without any substance, that's, that's, that's what you'll probably get. And so just, you know, see what happens in the market. All the bottom line is expect volatility. These are market moving reports. Um, whatever comes out of the uh, G20, especially with trade talks, uh, is is going to most likely move the markets as well. So now let's dive into the charts. With that being said, so just kind of you know position accordingly. We'll start out here very quickly. Take it down from the monthly charts all the way down to the 60-minute charts. The you know the main time frames I like to watch on the monthly chart. This again goes back into the 80s. We're looking at decades of price history here. Uh, quick recap. You know, you have uh, about, you know, roughly equal distances. This was the longest, one of the longest bull markets in history. But you can see every so often you get these divergent highs and you get these bear markets, these corrections. There's the great, you know, 57% drop. Doesn't look like much on this big, you know, when you go back 30 years. But you can see the last two bear markets were, uh, you know, over 50%. Uh, the one that came off the 2000 highs with, after the dot-com bubble and then of course the 2007 highs and the corrections along the way have been you know 20 15 20 percent and uh so on okay and the, the reason i wanted to start here just to kind of recap again uh so we had uh, a trend line break this is our bull market trend line off the 2009 lows we had a sell signal there with a big red impulsive candle confirming 20% drop roughly off the highs and then a kickback, a back test, and then more recently we zoom in tighter and this is why I wanted to do this video now before I leave because I will not be here 
Um, I'll try to do an update, but uh, come the end of the month after uh, this week is over, um, we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll see how this monthly candle closes. So what I wanted to get at. All the major stock indexes in the U.S. had these bearish engulfing candlesticks last month. They are potential topping sticks. Uh, and what you need to see, just like in the dailies that I've been covering recently and we'll get to here in a second, uh, ideally you want to see this candle. You you don't want to see it if, if you want to have that as a, a confirmation or a potential topping stick. By itself, to me, it doesn't mean uh, anything until it's confirmed. It certainly has potential there, but I like to see a bearish engulf in the follow-through stick. Uh, as I always say, the redder the better, but you don't have to have a red candle. You just want to keep that candle ideally about the uh, below the midpoint. Again, we zoom in tight. There's the candle, and you can see that's what happened last time around, bearish engulfing right here. Uh, this body of this candle engulfed this one, this one, and this one. Actually caught, engulfed the past uh, three there, four. Um, and then we had a green candle, but we still closed down uh, below the midpoint of that candle. Now, take a pretty good reversal this week, but uh, that's, to me, why I'm doing this is because it is priced into the charts. If those 60-minute wedges I've been highlighting play out, as well as the reversals on the daily chart, there's a potential. So that would be a pretty decent drop to get that. Otherwise, if we close up, this candle's not far. If the body of this candle, the fat part, by the end of the month, after June 30th, if it closes up, or ab above, I should say, last month's candle, then that really takes away from the significance and it doesn't confirm. It's a sign of non-confirmation. Again, anytime you have a, a potential topping stick, you want to see follow through to the downside to confirm it. So that's what it looks like on SPY, uh, QQQ, everything else. I could go down the line. They're all there. QQQ, unlike SPY, has, uh, you know, it's been the strongest index. And the way I have the monthly trend line drawn is it's it's just above trend. And again, that 20-month that EMA. It would take a heck of a move down to, to close us down below or the trend line. So I don't think it's going to happen uh, before I get back. But who knows? Uh, last time I went on vacation <laughs> was a right was it a Christmas Eve or no Christmas Day? Uh, went out to uh, Orlando with the kids, uh, Epcot Center, and the wife. And uh, sure enough, that's uh, when the big move I was looking for started with the uh, back in December when I was uh, you know looking uh, for a, a major bottom in the market, major snapback rally. So we'll see. That's what we call it, the RP uh, vacation indicator. So maybe we'll get a big move in the market this time. It's coming after rally, and this time I'm looking for downside. So we'll see. It's stranger things have happened, but again, to to close the month there just to wipe that that candle out completely uh, or the body of it you're talking about an eight percent drop certainly doable again let's see what happens bigger 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 much more powerful sell signal on the markets would come if and when we get a monthly close below both that uptrend line and that 20 month uh, moving average the blue dotted line which has just done a great job of acting as support and resistance you know these are just intermonth pierces these little uh, skinny parts, the candlestick shadows right there. Uh, but again, that 20 month, which I've covered in many videos in the past, has done a pretty darn good job of defining uh, bull and bear markets, you know, uh, acting as support when, when we're in a bull market and resistance when we're in a bear market. All right, so that's that. We'll see how those turn out. Again, I'll s certainly follow up no later than, you know, right when I get back next week on the 4th of July, depending on what happens. All right, uh, weekly charts. Uh, what do we have to cover there? Same story as you know before. Nothing's changed, nor nothing will change. Uh, it, you know, we'd need a really big move down, uh, like I just showed you, eight percent or better, let's call it, to really change and give us some good sell signals. And we'd need a huge move up for me to even uh, start to change my longer term outlook. So I'm leaving town. I'm going to have stops on all my short trades, all my long trades. I mean, I stops on everything, obviously. I'm going away for, you know, I'm leaving the country. I'm going to have limited access to trades. That's trading 101. I have no problem leaving the positions on that I have. OCO uh, orders, which are one cancels the other. So if my price targets hit, boom, great, I get out. If my stop is hit, boom, it takes me out and it cancels the other order. Um, but as of now, what I wanted to say is, there's, you know, like I talked about before, nothing will change, at least not in the very near term, at least not, you know, for just a five, six, seven, eight percent rally to the upside. Uh, nothing will change on the longer term outlook. And that is we continue to diverge, put in these steep divergences. Uh, they do work. They do play out. They just take time. 
uh, like I always say, nothing is 100%, uh, but I'd say 90% are better when you get confirmed divergence like you had right here last fall. It plays out for a correction. And very often you get that first divergent high, you simply extend the divergence. If you extend it, you're probably going to get a bigger drop, and that's still what I'm looking for. So big question is, do we have a little more upside? Do we extend those divergences and then go on down and, and test and then break this trend line or not? Uh, so we'll, we'll know soon enough, but I just want to let you know that uh, while I may be stopped out over the next week or so, if this market goes much higher and burns through the divergences, I certainly would not be uh, going uh, long. And I'm talking generally speaking. I'm talking general equities. There's individual stocks that I have long right now. There's a lot of, com you know, mostly commodities, um, gold, other things like that. There's plenty of money to be made in other things. I just continue to believe the risk reward is uh, very, very poor right now on the long side and I'm talking you know for a swing or longer term tread and trade or even investing things like that so I'd rather you know let the market set up and um, come to me than, than try to chase it if it happens to burn through the uh, divergences and the uh, wedges that we have on the 60 minute charts which we're about to get to so now here we are in QQQ uh, and I want to go over the indexes on the daily charts let me take away the, all the annotations for a second all right, so if you recall last week on Thursday, all the major indexes put in potential topping sticks, you know, all types of hammers, um, you know, dragonfly dojis, things like that, uh, several dojis. And I said those need to be confirmed with follow through red candles. So far, so good. Um, but we, again, we're again in a holding pattern like we were leading up to the FOMC meeting. This was the, the little pop here. Most of that move was the. Uh, the Trump Draghi one-two punch that I mentioned uh, last week uh, or right before the Fed. And then we had the post-Fed rally, but really we're, we faded most of that. So uh, this, these are the candles I'm watching. So, so far, check mark one, little red candle there, little red candle today, nothing huge. And again, I don't expect fireworks until we start to get uh, some of those uh, key economic reports come out this week. Uh, you probably by Thursday we're going to have a good idea which way we're going, especially if the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the final, you know, whatever update on the trade talks, how how that goes. So let's just say by the end of the week we'll have a good idea, and I think I would suspect we'll finally start to move and uh, pick a direction here in the market. All right, so those are the candles on QQQ, Spy, Dragonfly, Doji, followed by a red candle, another Doji. Uh, there's another red candle today. Uh, we're still, you know, not, we would like to see that bottom of that candle get taken out. But again, we need to see uh, a catalyst. Uh, this market needs to be kicked right now. It's like a record player that's stuck on scratch. If you guys from the old days remember the jukebox and you, you give it a hit and then the record starts playing again. That's SPY, DIA, the Dow. Uh, same story. You can see we're still below those potential topping candles from last Thursday. All right, let's just turn on the trend lines again. Uh, this is something I covered in the previous video today. Uh, simple stuff, really. Uh, every other index besides, I believe it's every single index besides the S&P 500 has not made new highs yet. S&P popped it on that doji. Here, we'll go back to that and then we'll get back here. Sorry to loop all over the place. So we go back to SPY and nope. Got to clear that out. Here we go, SPY. And it, you can see that was a, a high. You know, I'm sure it was cheered by the markets, uh, but it was, uh, as I often say, uh, breakouts that occur both with the markets or the security overbought and with negative divergence, just like the uh, previous one there, right here. That was a breakout to new highs. They tend to fail much more often than not. So while break out the new highs is typically bullish on face value, they are not when you have, again, negative divergence and uh, overbought conditions, which we did. So far, we failed. And as I said in the video earlier today, I'm going to tell you, it's not, I don't call, consider that a, a bear trap. Technically, is it a failed breakout? Yeah, but but not really. You want to just, I, I'll say this. Um, when you break out and the security breaks out to new highs, it is not unusual at all to have it come back in, test the breakout level, and even to come down a little through there and then continue on. So let's just call it right now um, it's still pending. Let's see what happens. Let's see how this area is resolved. All we do know is that we had some, so far, a trio of potential 
uh, topping patterns with the uh, or topping sticks, I should say, the last three candlesticks in, in the SPY and every other index. And the SPY, again, being the only index that made a new high. All the rest, I mean, they're close. We're not going to split hairs, but uh, that is the only one made a new high. I'll go back to the Dow. NASDAQ still comfortably below. Small caps and mid caps are way below their previous highs. Small caps had a bad day today. And so as you can see here, we're essentially looking at um, about uh, four four highs here let me uh, change the drawing tools okay here it is uh, we had the high back here in January of 18 parabolic advance leading up to that big correction couple sharp drops went on made a marginal new high uh, yeah divergent high it was divergent it's not drawn here had the big correction in the fourth quarter came up again close to that high failed it again at that point this is when the Nasdaq broke out so what you're seeing is some indexes making new highs others not Nasdaq broke out and we're trying again for a fourth attempt uh, so far we're still shy of that uh, October high back in the, the Dow and you can see the potential reversal sticks and as I said if they happen to pop it I, you know one thing I can almost guarantee this week we're gonna have some big sharp moves with all the market moving uh, economic reports plus uh, whatever happens with the uh, trade talks and so any new high like that uh, will very likely prove to be a, uh, a failed breakout or a, a fleeting new high uh, with a reversal because again you can see the uh, pretty strong divergences continue to build overbought conditions and uh, like I say overbought with divergences equal a much higher rate of failure for new highs so not a not a high that I would chase or care to chase um, and then when you look at this Here's the example I used in the uh, in the other video today. Uh, we have what seems to me to be a a, a pretty clear uh, or a potential topping pattern here. Big, big topic pattern. Now, this is where people will and, and can and will see what they want to see. So you're either glass half full if you're bullish and think that the market and the economy have a lot more room to run this year in 2019 then what you're going to think and, and look at and see here and it could be let me tell you it could be uh would be a uh a, just a big consolidation range and this is about a year and a half so again glass half empty sees the market going absolutely nowhere for a year and a half now while glass half full sees a powerful year and a half consolidation uh waiting for and expecting an upside break and, and a big move out of there uh from big consolidation patterns like this come big moves whereas uh, that's glass half full meaning the bulls glass half empty meaning the bears see so you move back down to the bottom of the pattern and another break blow and this time probably stick and get a much larger uh, drop from there that's still my expectation and uh, I'll get the example I gave earlier today was Tesla you know here's a pattern I've watched for years now uh, here let me show it to you on the weekly chart so Tesla, this is a weekly chart, had uh, virtually the same thing. I'm going to just real quick toggle back and forth. Go back to the daily chart. I know I'll go to a two-day period, show you a little longer. Yeah, this is what I want to show you. All right, so what you can see, just like the Dow, we had one, two, three, four failed attempts all at the same level. That was, you know, roughly the same level right there. And uh, you can see we also had, as I showed you here on the weekly chart, boxed in so this is a two-year sideways trading range just like we had a range right there before then and so when we broke that range we broke to the downside and as you know as I said it would if we broke it and it would be quick we'd go down to the bottom of that previous trading range that 180 target I had bounce so that's what I'm looking at the similarities doesn't mean it has to play out that way you know this thing could have went the other way but why didn't it go the other way well uh, I believe uh, this is it right here again it's a lot like the Dow uh, and these weren't things that I added after the fact these were all there in advance we had a uh, every time we'd come up to that level that 388-ish level uh, Tesla did it with negative divergence in place all the lines aren't here there's one you can see the negative divergence on each and every one of these highs uh, and there was one before that followed by a correction so this is why I favor that glass half empty or bear scenario versus the half full scenario on Dow. I was using the Dow. S&P is going to look the same. NASDAQ 100, all of those indexes. Uh, so uh, now let's zoom it, take it down to the 60 minute charts and from there we'll wrap it up. Okay, we've broken down below the 60 minute uh, bullish rising wedges as expected there. You can see the uh, uptrend lines. 
Uh, there's your divergence, there's your rising wedge, uh, like we had a divergent high back here, and this is a divergent high as well right here. And uh, let's move this over there. And now the breakdown, I mentioned this earlier today, uh, it is a breakdown, so that is a sell signal, but it is, I'd have to put a question mark by it because it's not impulsive. That's not impulsive selling right there. Uh, what does impulsive selling look like? That's what impulsive selling looks like. That's what impulsive selling looks like. So, and again, I, I attribute that to the fact there is a very, very heavy economic calendar plus a G20 summit this uh, week. Uh, so the markets are probably on, you know, on standby. And in other words, uh, a breakdown that doesn't occur impulsively, meaning high volume, ideally one and a half times or better, a lot of impulsive selling, they run a higher uh, chance of, of, of proving to be a false breakdown. So you have to you know, take that one with a grain of salt. It is what it is, and it, we are below trend. Um, but uh, the news, you know, anything that comes, the news or the economic events could could change this, the the outcome of where we go from here. So what do you want to look for from here? Well, we rally up. Do we back test the trend line and roll over? And then do we do so impulsively? If so, do we regain those trend lines? I'm going to go over all the indexes real quick on these 60 minute charts. That would be bullish. Why? Well, that would show a bear trap or false breakdown this 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 breakdown right here would prove to be a false breakdown and that could be bullish so if we regain these trend lines with conviction particularly on a, on a daily closing basis then it, it's foiled at least these breakdowns the divergences will still be intact so you have to watch that but if they just keep going on up and they burn through these divergence lines you know with the PPO and the MACD moving up like that uh, then that would be obviously uh, bullish. So those are things we watch for. QQQ, same thing, broke down below the wedge, you can see right there, but just kind of hugging hugging support right there and, and really not going anywhere. So a breakdown, yes, but not confirmed with impulsive selling. Again, uh, this a breakdown here, it wasn't impulsive, but you kicked back, you had a back test, then an impulsive move down. Tried to rally again, failed at the previous high, and then boom, that's all she wrote. So we'll be watching, looking for something similar like anything like that. Doesn't have to happen that way, um, but what you don't want to see if you're short or bearish uh, or looking to get short, you don't want to see your recovery back of those levels. If so, you're probably going to pop the highs on QQQ. All right, uh, small caps had an interesting day. They actually have some impulsive selling. This is exactly what impulsive selling looks like similar wedges on the small caps which are still well below their uh, all-time highs uh, this is IWM the small cap ETF and there it is so uh, that's that's impulsive selling that confirms that breakdown but unfortunately I doubt IWM will continue to solve impulsively it is possible but unlikely if SPY and QQQ don't begin to follow suit to the downside if the large caps rise uh, from where we close this week and they take out the recent highs, chances are IWM will, will play a game of catch up. Maybe come down here, hit my first target. Um, but if SPY and QQQ start to roll over and move down impulsively, there's probably more downside to come on the small caps here as well. All right, now let's look at futures. We'll just go in reverse order. This is RTY. These are the small cap futures. Russell 2000. There's that nice clean. The futures have even uh, better defined trend lines and patterns here. Uh, so this is what I'm watching. So we broke down. It wasn't impulsive right away, but until today we started going down and, and had a nice impulsive down day, about 1% down on the futures there. Uh, so that's RTY, small cap futures. Uh, uh, this is NQ, the, uh, S, or the uh, NASDAQ 100 E-minis. And as I said, just like QQQ, we broke the trend line, and it's a pretty well-defined trend line, um, but what we're lacking on that breakdown is impulsive selling. So sell signal, take it on face value for what it is, but uh, again, put a little question mark. Don't, have, don't, don't assign it that much awaiting until and unless we start to move down impulsively. So let's just watch what happens over the next few days, back test. Uh, if we back test, we want to stay below that trend line to keep uh, the bear scenario healthy and intact, let's say. Uh, otherwise, it starts to chip away, at least in the near term, as I said. And uh, But you can see, if we go up any higher, it is guaranteed right now to be a divergent high. Even if we snap back above that trend line tomorrow, those divergences would continue to extend. And uh, let's look at ES. 
the S&P 500 E-minis. Same story. There's a breakdown, you can see, uh, but not very impulsive. So uh, to be continued tomorrow and throughout this week, unfortunately, uh, I won't be able to do any intraday updates. And I can tell you right now, uh, probably not going to be able to do an end of day update tomorrow. Although I'll make every effort to if I get, get into the uh, hotel time. And on a final note, I'll just wrap up. I've done some pretty extensive analysis on bonds recently, corporates, treasuries, uh, particularly treasuries, uh, and other safe haven assets like gold. So the, the, the what stands out right now, and this isn't just me noticing it, others, you know, uh, there's an article in the journal today about it. Um, there's something going on here that's just not right with the stock market. Treasury bonds have rallied very sharply and continue to rally. Uh, putting in multi-year highs at the same time the stock market's not far off uh, multi-year or all-time highs and that is unusual and, and gold it, it continues to catch a strong bid I've been you know big fan of gold for a while now uh, it's certainly part of my you know longer term funds and that is showing there is just a persistent bid flight to safety bid uh, or bid into these flight to safety assets and there's an old saying on Wall, Wall Street the bond market is 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 uh, it's usually not wrong of the two the bond market tends to be more accurate than the stock market so uh, what it's telling us Treasury bonds are rallying it's saying a couple things either you know that usually means uh, flight to safety from you know institutional investors smart money moving money into there also it's the bond market saying that it expects weaker growth aka it's priced in a recession with the yield curve inversions these rallies in treasuries coming down yields coming back to multi-year lows and uh, the stock market is ignoring that and uh, again that's that's not a healthy sign so one of the two is going to happen one of the two is going to break either uh, this rally in the stock market's for real it's got more legs to go and the economy is is not in as bad a shape as being is being priced in right now by the uh, bond market if that's the case then there could be some more upside in equities here and then bonds are likely to correct here treasury bonds uh, corporate bonds I think uh, we'll see a correction there Otherwise, um, the market is ignoring what could be a, a, a pretty dangerous red flag, and then uh, things could get ugly at, at any point. So uh, that's that's what I'm watching right now. And, uh, you know, we can sit here all day long and try to hash out how that's going to play out, what the economy is going to do, what these, you know, the economic reports that come out this week, how they might look. But all we can do right now, at least at this point, is, is you know, follow the charts, watch these trend lines, Watch for those, uh, you know, any additional selling uh, red closes on the daily charts of the indexes to help confirm those potential topping sticks from last Thursday and so forth. Otherwise, if they get wiped out, then that again, like I said, that chips away at the bearish case. Doesn't eliminate it, but chips away at it. And I'm referring to the intermediate to longer term bearish case. All right, we'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.